Well, hey there, you're on the internet, I have some free time, and welcome to the Triple N Network, where all you newbie nib nerds can find all the news you'll need. Let's look at an ink today, shall we? If we can, because I don't have any more of it. Um, in fact, I ran out before the tests were even done, so uh, be prepared for that. Uh, the ink that I'll be attempting to review today is by Private Reserve, if my camera will focus. Naples Blue, which is really a nice, lovely blue. And when you get in a bottle, generally they come in bottles like this, except you know that'll be a lighter blue and it'll say Naples Blue instead. Or if you get them in cartridges like I had, they come in packages like this of 12 and it'll say Naples Blue. Yeah, so. Yeah, it ran out of it, but I think that shows just how much I enjoyed it. So, yeah, all the tests were done in this, uh, in both of these. This one is a Jin Hao with a fairly broad and fairly wet nib, so one end of the spectrum, and this Knox Galileo with a sort of very standard fine nib, so well, yeah, I'd say it's standard. So let's check out the chromatography. Here's how you're supposed to do it, where you put a drop of ink and instantly dunk it in the water. As you can see, it really fled. Uh, all the, the pigment and dye really just left. Uh, but you do get sort of this nice, uh, very simple light blue with this little crown at the top. And then here I let it dry, but as you can see, there's really no discernible difference. So yeah, this ink is pretty hydrophobic. Top down in density, Claire Fontaine, 90 grams per square meter. Uh, in the fine nib, it took nine seconds to dry. In the Jin Hao, the wet Jin Hao, it took 25. I hope you can see this fantastic shading we get in here. And here, in the writing. And uh, if you put it in a sort of broad wet nib like the Jin Hao, you also will get sheen. Hopefully this will show up. It's like a red metallic sheen that you see in the bits that were written by the Jin Hao. At least, you know, like when it was really being laid on thick, so yeah. Okay, I knew I was running out of the ink, so I ensured that like all of the important parts of the test were, were you know, done with the actual ink itself, and the review was just done in, yeah. So I said the flow was probably about five and a half or six, so it's a little bit on the wet side. Uh, there's no, I said there's no real bleeding, because like, okay, I was really rubbing it on there because I wanted to give you guys a chance to see that sheen that I know is there. Uh, but there's no, like just in the writing, there's no bleed, there's no feather, there's no spread. Um, there's not much of an echo because, I mean, okay, there, again, I was really scrubbing it on. There's really not much of an echo because this is a fairly light to medium blue ink. Yeah. Really runs away from water. Um, it, you know, it just, so it kind of made a bit of a mess. Like here you can barely tell that there even was ink there in the first place. So yeah, not the most water resistant. Next is Rhodia, 80 grams per square meter. Where previously, because again, you know, I, I really enjoy this ink, so I've used it. Uh, it, you know, if you put it on, you know, heavy and wet, the way I generally like my pens in my private life, uh, when I've used it on this paper, there are like little bits of halo sheen like around the dots of eyes or like when you get these really intense sort of like outlines, sometimes you'll get like a razor thin bit of like red sheen. But here I really didn't get much of that. I think the pen was just really running out of ink. Uh, yeah, so the Broad Wet Jin Hao, 22 seconds to dry. The Knox Galileo, 9. But you see this great shading. It's a wonderful effect. Uh, yeah, again... I kind of scrubbed it a little bit so it almost came through. That's the rollerball with the oily ink, so that's not Naples Blue's fault. Yeah, uh, no bleed, no feather, no spread. Really good behaved. Yeah, as you can see, there's like the barest hints of it left. It dyed the page. It is really, really gone. That the camera's picking up more of it than the naked eye can, and even still. Looking at it on camera, it's still kind of hard to read. So, yeah, keep this ink away from water. Next is Tomoe River Paper, where, again, you get fabulous shading, and you get this beautiful halo effect. I feel like you really see it in the word Jin Hao. You see that outline? 
yeah. I'm a big fan of that. I don't know if most people are, but yeah. So the fine Knox Galileo took 14 seconds. The Braun Wet Jin Hao took 25, but I think as you might be able to see, especially the Jin Hao was really starting to just run on fumes. But yeah, still decent shading. No bleed feather spread. There might be some echo, but this is extremely thin paper and this is a white background, so. Yeah. I mean, it's well behaved, you know, it's a beautiful color. Uh, it's just really not water resistant. Um, Tomoe River loves to let ink just slide away when you add more water, and that is definitely the case here. It did dye the page a little bit. You can see the barest little remnants of where it used to be, but that is really, really gone. Yeah, so. Hmm. Up next is the world's worst 20 pound copier paper, and this is actually the last test with that broad and wet uh, Jin Hao. I did two different tests, each for the Fine Knox Galileo and the Jin Hao. And as you can see, it was really running on its last fumes. It was getting quite pale. It was struggling. And as you might expect, you know, with the broad and wet nib on the world's worst paper, you're getting feathering and you're getting plenty of bleed and yeah, spread. It's a much broader line than it should be. Three and a half seconds to dry. But because the paper is more absorbent, more of the ink sort of sunk in and it was a little harder to wash out. However, it did, as you can see, sort of feather and explode and just make a mess. So, yeah. Now, this is the fine. And three seconds to dry. Really no shading, but you still get spread and you still get feathering. And you still get some bleed, which is, uh, I like to see, well, okay, not that, that was the, the roller ball, but yeah, you still get some bleed. I, mean, I like a little bit better performance than that in a fine nib. And again, because, you know, the paper's more absorbent, more could sink in. And so there is more that remains, but it still kind of dyed the page. It's still feathered and exploded. Not be the easiest thing to read. Next is me notebook paper, where I just used the Knox Galileo and fine, where as you would expect, uh, not a great reaction, considering the last test we've seen. There is some, there is some spread, there is some feathering, there's really not a whole lot of shading left. There is some bleed, and generally I like to see a slightly better performance out of a fine nib, but this is very, very cheap paper, so sliding scale here. I said it might do well in a dry writing extra fine, but yeah. Again, absorbent paper, more sunk in, harder to wash out, but still sort of feathered and exploded. Wouldn't be the world's easiest thing to read. This paper does not like water, it does weird things. Up next is modern moleskin notebook paper. This is, you know, contemporary. This isn't my freakishly well-behaved aged notebook paper. You know, this is the stuff you get nowadays, which is tragic. Um, yeah, lots of feathering. Lots of spread, just kind of a mess. And as you can probably tell, just use the fine Galileo here. Four seconds to dry, there's really no shading left. I mean, look at that scribble, there's no, there's nothing left in there. And uh, I mean, that's a lot of bleed for a fine nib. And uh, I mean, this is one of the reasons why I gave up on moleskin paper. It really just doesn't behave well with a raw ink pen. So yeah, and disastrous water test. I mean, it feathered, it exploded, it, but because it is slightly absorbent, you know, there is some in there, but I mean, that would be pretty hard to read. So there you go for your consideration, Private Reserve Naples Blue. Is it perfect? No, no, it is not. But it is a lovely shade of blue. Uh, I personally enjoyed it. Uh, the slightly wet flow sort of went with my own personal preferences of liking broader, wetter nibs, and I like the way it sheens on nicer papers. Uh, not very water resistant, so I would not use it to address the outside of envelopes. So, yeah. I recommend you at least give it a try. It's really not bad for a light to medium blue. For your consideration from the Triple N Network, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching. Bye.